Okay, so today we're going to be getting into the Hashashin guide for 2021. It's been a while since I've dropped a guide for Hashashin. And that's mainly because that guide actually lasted for a very long time. But I feel like with all the new balance changes and the new tech that we found over the time with Hashashin, and of course the new the new skills, the rebumps, all that good stuff. Time to update the guide. We're gonna have timestamps throughout the video. I'd probably recommend like saving this video somewhere and uh, watching to the timestamps whenever you guys can because I'm actually gonna be going over every single thing you need to know for both Awakening and Succession. If you don't believe me, you can look through the timestamps during the video and you'll see everything. Now for your guys' gear setup for the Ashashin. Hashashin has abnormally higher accuracy compared to all the classes. It also has very high evasion, and we're quite protected when it comes to dishing out damage. When it comes to choosing between your main hand with the Often and Zarka and the Black Star, Black Star will definitely be good in um, PvE. However, PvP, the Often is the best choice for the Hashashin. This is also amplified even further with the fact that about half the classes in the game are currently using a DR meta because they're, they're submitting to the accuracy accessories. Hashashin, however, has so much accuracy to where that we don't really need to worry about that too much. As long as you guys have a lot of AP and you guys have a lot of gear, you're going to have enough accuracy to kind of uh, break through that. So it's going to help you guys a lot. I recommend you guys go with the Often, go Evasion, so you go Libras and Muskins and Heath. And for your offhand, go with the Kudum. I do recommend you guys to get multiple offhands, do get a Nuber, do get the evasion offhand, and do get the accuracy offhand. I would also recommend having a centaur belt. Having item swaps is very important for certain situations. It's always going to be important. But pretty much, this is going to be the dream build you guys are going for in terms of gear and items for the Awakening and Succession of Shashin. When it comes to crystals, uh, this is going to be assuming you have the Garmoth slot um, in your uh Dandelion, you want to have two Hooms, you want to have Elkars in your main hand, Jin Harpias in the helmets, two special attack evasions in the chest, in here, having Jin Vipers, having Corrupteds in the offhand, and then in your shoes, you want to have Hooms. The reason why we are not running with Adamantins on the Hashashin is because as an Ashashin player, you should be getting very familiar with SA trading and rotating your SAs. And Ashashin is one of the few classes where you can stay fully protected. So running the, the Adamantines don't really help you much unless you're being a potato and using random skills. So I recommend going with the extra tanky build to help you guys get extra tanky in um, your SA trades. Now for your offhand crystal, you can either use... Um, the corrupted crystals or you can use the um ignore uh knockdown slash uh bound resistance crystals um that'll help you because our shift f and whatnot are bound base and that's typically where your combo gets ruined by the cc resistance meta so it's up to you whether you want to use those crystals or you want to use the corrupted magic crystals now for skill builds and stuff like that and i have said this over and over again skill points are something that's really easily obtainable nowadays so what i recommend is the spot where i was able to go from 0 sp to 2.2 ksp in one day was over here at crescents um i was popping skill exp scrolls and whatnot but basically when you guys walk up here in the front of Crescents, there's a path right here you can go up, and then you walk around and go across, and there's an enhanced Crescent mob area where the Crescents are, like, empowered a little bit. You need about 200 AP to grind it, which is easy, right? Um, they give the most SP in the game, however, they don't give a lot of uh, money. Now, guys, for both the Awakening and Succession Hashashin builds, you're just going to max everything out. You're not going to lock anything except for uh, your evasion and your rage transfer. So this, and then your evasion. That's all you're locking. Other than that, you want to max out the entire kit. There is not a single skill in the Ashashin kit that's bad. You're going to have a use for everything. Now for the Awakening and Succession Rebombs, there is a difference between the two. For Awakening, you want to use Prophecy Blade, Mirage Assault, and Sand Tornado. Sand Tornado flows to be really nice with... Uh, Awakening. For Succession, you will also use Prophecy Blade and Mirage Assault. However, 
for this sort of bomb, you want to use Shadow Slicer. Reason, the reason why you use Shadow Slicer is because it flows really nicely with Prime Sand Slicer, which has a different uh, mechanics to it. Uh, Sand Slicer between Prime and Absolute work differently. For, for Succession, you want to use Prime Sand Slicer, and later on in the guide, we will discuss uh, what the uses of that's going to be. Alright guys, this is going to be your add-ons for Awakening Ashashin, right here. You guys can just copy what I have. Uh, there is one thing I do want to point out. For PvP, you can replace the plus 20 monster AP for any PvP related buff you guys really want. There is another thing that is worth mentioning with Awakening add-ons. Now the Down Smash add-ons to Descent and Chosen Blade are really important for your uh, resets and uh, random combo extensions to happen. So I would recommend putting those on. They're really, really OP. A notable mention for an add-on too is to put a down smash add-on onto crown kick. However, I have found that even without using that add-on, I still get the down smashes to proc very often. So, like I said, it is a little bit of customization with the awakening add-ons, but this is what I personally like to use myself. Alright, and this is going to be your PV add-ons for succession hashashin. If you want to make this into a PvP add-on selection, you can take off the monster damage here and swap that. And then I would really recommend swapping out Shadow Slitter for uh, Purge and then adding some PvP related add-ons there. There's a little bit of versatility within those add-ons. Now as you guys can see with this monster damage setup, we only have two monster damage skills. The reason for that is because in PvE, I have seen a large overcompensation in PvE add-ons. The reason for you not needing to do that is because you're going to start your PvE combo with Shadow Slitter. And then all your pre-buff skills will lead into Descent. So by the time you have Descent up, you're going to have uh, minus 40 DP with uh, um, Dune Slash, of course. And then you're going to have plus 30 monster damage, then you'll be able to proc all of this. So the 3% accuracy, the 20% critical hit rate, the all evasion, all that stuff is going to start proccing. So that's pretty much what you will want to do. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get to the Awakening Ashashin portion. Just really quick, I'm going to do a brief overview of how I feel about Awakening Ashashin compared to Succession Ashashin. Awakening Ashashin is definitely the stronger 1v1-er. It is also, in my opinion, the better large-scale class. However, Awakening Ashashin is much, much, much harder than Succession Ashashin, and Awakening Ashashin is currently one of the hardest classes to master in terms of skill ceiling. It has a lot of cancels, lots of combos, Lots of movement cancels. It's a very high APM. To the casual eye or to the beginner, you're going to look at this class and be like, well, Succession's easier, so it's better. If you guys are willing to put in the work, then this will be the guide for you. But let's go ahead and get into it. The very first thing before we talk about anything and is the most important thing are going to be your hotbar because your hotbar is going to give you access to certain cancels and stuff like that. You want to have all breath in your hotbar. You want to have descent. Quicksand, Sin Splitter, you want to have Sand Tornado, Haledi Assault, and Silent Breed. Outside of that, uh, cooldowns I like to visibly see is my Shift Q buff, my two Rebombs, so this Rebomb and this Rebomb, and then my Grab. I like those are two uh, very important cooldowns I need to have visually there. Um, one, because the, the Rebomb gives you access to extra super armor, and one is quite literally movement to get out of certain situations if needed. Alright guys, now we're going to go ahead and get into the Ashashin movement. This is going to be like about 70% of what you guys want to learn. Now the movement is actually very complicated, so I went ahead and broke this into a very small segment. So there's going to be a lot of cuts, but it's going to be just precise information and in like, in like a little compilation here. Your iframe always puts you into awakening and the skill does not linger. In order to fix this, what you can guys can start doing is by holding A or D after a C swap, you can go into your block. This is the very first thing you guys want to learn how to get comfortable with. Our awakened version of casting hourglass, our F skill is quite slow. Similarly to doing our C-Swap cancel, I would recommend that you hold the C-Swap to the left and, or the right in pre-awakening, and by pressing F, you can speed up this animation to be a lot quicker, as you guys can see. The same thing also applies to when you want to recall back to your hourglass, so again, C-Swap, F. It's a lot faster than doing the awakening version. The awakening version would look like this. It's much slower as you can see, but when you C-Swap, it's rather instant. 
When you guys hold block, you are allowed to do your LMB and RMB flows as followed. LMB, this is unprotected. RMB, this is a super armor and can be spammed off of cooldown. However, there will be no super armor effect applied. So combining the two, you will get this. Now guys, with that movement, you can also add WF, which is a super armor, which is called Halady Assault. So combining everything we have learned, we are going to be doing an iframe into the block, into the LMB flow, RMB, Halady Assault, back into our block, which is going to look like this. Sand Slicer can also be used after our basic iframe. If you guys combine everything that we've learned already, you guys can already start to move around pretty fast, like this. Another pre-awakening skill that we can add to our movement is Piercing Tornado, which has a few interesting properties. There are three ways to combo after Piercing Tornado. The first way is Sand Slicer, the second way is Tail Cutter, which looks like this. When you start getting into your crouching animation, you cast Shift F, which is Hourglass, and you can teleport, it's like a, it's like a cancel. Again guys, combining everything we have learned, you can move even faster. Another very important skill for pre-awakening movement is going to be Silent Breach. Silent Breach can literally be, be cast after any pre-awakened movement skill. I'll give you guys a few examples. Alright guys, another really important cancel for movement, and it's actually also a good engage, is going to be the purge cancel. When you guys hold purge and you iframe and you hold the iframe, you'll actually do two iframes. Adding this, it's going to look something like this. Another super neat mechanic for pre-awakening movement is that certain skills you are able to immediately cancel out of with hourglass. So for example, if I have hourglass up and I actually do Halady Assault, I'm going to cancel mid animation. Uh, you can actually do that with a lot of pre-awakening skills in general that lock you. So for example, if you're doing quicksand, you can teleport out. Okay, so uh, get very used to uh, doing these cancels. The same thing applies for Piercing Tornado. Uh, I would experiment with all of your mobility skills I have taught you so far and experiment with the hourglass cancels because hourglass cancels are something that are heavily underutilized and should be used more. For awakening, the very first thing to note is uh, you do have a jump attack, which is good in certain situations when you, when you want to preserve stamina. So if you're just trying to get out and you still want to move forward, you can jump L and B to preserve stamina. but. Um, Use this really cautiously, like you should really only do this if you're really far away. Your biggest tool for mobility and awakening is WF. Sin Splitter is also really good for movement and obviously you can cancel from Sin Splitter into our WF which looks like this. Now guys, the icing on the cake for the movement, your beautiful third rib bomb. Let's add that to the mix. You guys are probably wondering how I did Halady Assault into pre from Awakening into Pre-Awakening because if you do that, it won't come out. And if you just press the hop bar, it won't come out. This is actually a very advanced cancel. It's called a tab cancel. The way you do it is you're going to iframe. While you're walking forward, you will press tab and then you're going to press the hop bar for Halady Assault. Now, if you do this in simultaneous motion, it's going to look like this. Do not forget about using your hourglass for movement. It is super strong. Here's some examples.
by this point you have now learned every single thing you need to know about the Hashashan movement. Now it's really up to you, the player, to start experimenting and comboing things together because quite honestly, there is no one best way to combo everything together. There's going to be multiple ways of comboing all the movement together. Alright, so by learning the movement cancels, you guys have already by default learned a lot of the important cancels, believe it or not. So now it's going to get a lot easier is the good news. Okay, so the cool thing is with Condemnation, which is a skill that just got buffed for us. Um, Condemnation is a flow that we do that actually does a lot of damage and is very important to utilize. So for this, I would really recommend that... Uh, you guys learn how to cancel out of the four ways. So the first way is going to be out of ensnaring sands by holding L and B. And by the way, all these cancels involve holding L and B after the skills, okay? For Serpent's Coil, the same thing applies. Dune Slash. And now the new way to do it is out of Collapse. You can cancel collapse by going into Sin Splitter with W, R, and B. Collapse is also cancelable by Dominion, which is Spacebar. When you guys miss your grab, you can instantly cancel it with your Hourglass. So there's no punish animation, or it's at least really small. When you guys hit the grab, the Hourglass will not cancel your grab animation on the attack. Only on miss. So the moral of the story is... Never grab unless Hourglass is up. Thin Splitter has a gap at the very end of it like this where you land where it's unsafe. So you can also treat Thin Splitter with the same respect as to your grab. Don't do it unless Hourglass is up and you can cancel it mid-animation. You can get the CC, cancel it, and then follow up. All of our big hitting animations or long animations are cancelable by our iframe or by our Hourglass. Alt Breath is cancelable by Prophecy Blade. You can insta cast Ridge Reaver from Awakening by C swapping into it. You can conceal the block jump animation by doing Haladi Assault. Grab is cancelable to the left. You can instantly get into your grab after Hourglass. The same can be done after your Rabam Mirage Assault. And lastly, you can C swap after your Purge Cancel for some safety. PvE low end is pretty simple. You're going to be one shotting almost every mob you guys come across, so you're basically going to be rotating all of your awakening skills, to be honest. So it's going to be like this a pack will be killed. You go in here, Shift F. You might do this. A pack will be killed, Serpent. A pack will be killed. You might do Sin Splitter, Shift F, and you'll just keep repeating like that. It's nothing crazy. You'll do Ridge, you'll Ridge Reaver, Shift Q, go in, boom. Just like that. Super easy, right? For high end, despite how Hashashna being a very hard class, for high end PvE, he's actually super easy. So the first thing you guys are going to want to learn is how to pull mobs properly. Quicksand. And then finally, your Haledi Throw. Haledi Throw will always CC on the first hit, so be mindful of when you're pulling mobs. You purposely miss the first hit, and then you hit them with this, which will instantly wake up the mobs, and then they'll start pulling over to you. Another great tool for pulling is actually using Purge, especially towards mobs that don't get knocked down. Just like that, and then you can miss, and then pull whatever other mob is around you, then they'll all pull to you. Another great tool for pulling is let's say there's a pack over here to my right and a pack to my left. You can use your shift extra bomb just like that and then they'll both pull over to you. Do note that your tornadoes, your all's breath will count as an extra summon once they all converge into one spot and you will be able to pull an extra three mobs. For your PvE combo when you're actually doing damage, the combo is very simple. So 
You're going to start off with Inquisition into Piercing Fang. This is now going to give you an accuracy rate and an all AP bonus as well as any add-ons I have instructed you to get on your skills. And once that is done, you will follow up with Sand Slicer into Ridge Reaver. Sand Slicer gives you an attack speed buff and Ridge Reaver will give you a um, critical hit buff. Now once that is done, you have two options. You can either iframe, take it to the back and then do Shift F for your final DP debuff or you can just C swap in place and do Shift F. That will look like this. By now the mobs are fully debuffed and you are ready to do your big damage. Your big damage is going to be this, Ensnaring Sands, into Condemnation, into Serpent's Coil, into Collapse. But by, in most cases the mobs are going to be dead after Ensnaring and Serpent. If by any reason the mobs are not dead, you can do another iframe into Collapse into Dominion, into Ridge Reaver, into Shift Q. So, a possible pull on mobs is gonna look exactly like this. For your PvP engage souls, you have your block jump, sin splitter, you have the collapse cancels, you can risk doing a shift F into condemnation, and you also have your grab. To counter attack, you can have them hit your Q, by holding LMB you'll do an automatic block jump, or you can manually cast that counter and then those are pretty much your most important engages. You can also try to attempt to catch people with your purge cancel. Other than that, your follow-up combos are always going to be the same. My gear is off and I will show you guys all the possible combos. So for your number one go-to combo without a down smash is going to be this. Grab, Inquisition, Shift F, Collapse, Piercing Fang, Alls, Bridge Reaver, Shift Q. Okay. Sometimes you can proc a down smash on your shift Q because of our add-on. In that scenario, you will follow up with your bombs. Again, it will be the same starter but different ender, so I will not announce the starter. You guys will catch on pretty quick. So it's going to be grab, collapse, and now I'm going to with slicer into tornado. It's the same combo, but we ended with slicer into tornado. If you get lucky, you will get a down smash with Slicer. This combo I'm about to show you next can have really nice utility for large scale, mainly because you can reposition yourself into a float. So let me show you what that looks like. So now I'm going to do Slicer, Purge, Alls, Bridge Reaver, Shift Q. And that reposition from Purge, it can do a CC. That's why it's really good. Another, ex another acceptable combo for damage is like going to be like this. So, shift death, collapse, just like that. So you're going to go into Slicer, Ridge Reaver, and the Tornado. You guys will naturally start finding combos as you guys experiment, but I do want to talk about uh, the reset mechanic and the All's Breath mechanic, because they're really big for Ashajin. So, the reset mechanic. The way the reset mechanic works on Ashajin is that you're going to be down smashing so much that the down smashes will will uh, bleed into the CC reset timer, allowing you to re-CC. So the, what this is going to look like is going to be a specific combo. You're going to grab, Inquisition, Shift F, Collapse, Crown Kick, Slicer, Ridge Reaver. Then you follow up with Sin, Sin Splitter, Shift F, like this, and you can keep going as you can see. Infinite combo essentially. Alright guys, so for this combo, make sure you have your attack speed buff up for this one. This is going to be your All's Breath mechanic. Is you're going to grab All's Breath, Shift Q, Fang into Inquisition. What this combo allows for is some huge damage. I'm going to do it again, but this time I'm going to combo it in with the reset. And hopefully it's going to hit. Okay, so 
So watch this. So grab, alls, shift Q, bang, inquisition, crown kick, slicer, bridge reaver, sin splitter, shift F. You can do that same combo, do the same enders I taught you guys, and do the same reset as well. And uh, I mean, with with AP, if you want to see a fraction of what that can look like in a combo. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's disgusting. That just about covers everything for Awakening Ashashin. Let's go ahead and get to Succession. All right, guys, for your hot bar setup, really simple. You're going to have your Prime Alls Breath, Descent, Blades Packed, Blinding Spirals. I like to have Shadow Slicer. I like to see my double iframe cooldown visibly. So for the Prime, the Prime Sand Warp, and then your uh, two Rebomb. I like to see the cooldowns for that. Other than that, you guys are gooch. Let's start learning Hashashin movement. Very similarly to the Awakening Guide, we'll be cutting it into certain cuts and excerpts so you guys can learn quickly and in step. The first thing you guys will notice about Hashashin movement is that your iframe can now be casted twice. Another really cool thing about the iframe is that if you linger it backwards, your forward guard will linger. However, your stamina will be locked. So using it for, for protection can be really good. The very first thing you want to learn again is knowing how to do this. Just iframe, Q, iframe, Q, iframe, Q, iframe, Q. Get very good at doing that. When you are holding block or if you iframe, you can do slicer or you can do tail cutter. So what that looks like is like this. Just like that guys. If you want to add even more movement to that kit, what you guys can start doing is you can add in Haledi Assault. So adding to everything that we have learned so far, you can now do something like this. For even more movement, you can add in your Piercing Tornado. Adding everything we've learned, it's going to start looking like this now. Now guys, something that's really important for movement is going to be Hourglass Cancelling. This is going to be a lot of your movement on, on Ashashin in general. So, Hourglass Movement, you're just going to find a target. You know, Hourglass, Midair, Cancel it, iframe, and then you're going to be in. Similarly to Awakening, um, F has some really cool mechanics with it. So again, you can cancel your Piercing Tornado, things like that, of that nature. Your Haledi Assault, you can cancel mid-animation as well. Shift E. Using this for movement and, and succession is actually more important because succession overall has less movement compared to awakening and you have a lot more stamina problems as well. So utilizing your tornado is going to be very important in general on succession. For even more movement you have your Rabam. It's actually really nice for movement. You can pair it up with one iframe for example, Rabam, and then you can do two iframes. So for example. Now guys, before I start getting into the full movement combo, because it's a lot, get very good at doing slicer in between your iframes. You can actually slicer in between your double iframes, so for example... Again though, very stamina heavy class, so for example... Get your stamina back. Alright guys, so for important candles and little tricks, the very most important thing on Sakash is make sure you have a point to click on. Uh, very simple, just go to display settings, uh, not display, go to interface settings, and then you're going to go to mouse interface, use mouse to move, turn that on. That's good because of your shifting, you can rotate this for good SA trade damage. That's very important. One important cancel to note is that your uh, all's breath, you can cancel all's breath with almost any skill in your kit. So uh, you can block jump out of it or anything. So when you're doing this, literally any skill will cancel it. You can even just shift Q 
or descent or shifty anything any skill can come out of that so just do note that and uh for canceling other than what i have taught for slicer movement that's really it just knowing how to do slicer movement will be good enough and then really the only other cancel you need to know is going to be your iframe and then dune slash that's really it succession hashashin isn't very complicated whatsoever and uh, it's a very straightforward class. Guys, so for PvE low end, um, let's pretend that this rock is a mod pack and like my tent is a mod pack and then that rock is a mod pack for low end, right? For low end, it's really easy, okay? It's literally just gonna be one skill or two. So just this, that pack will literally be dead. Move around, Ridge Reaver, Shift Q, move around, do your Rebomb, Move around, right? Let's get the pack restarted. Descent. It's literally just going to be your skills. There's nothing complicated or any rotation needed for low end. You're just going to watch out anything with like most of your skills. Um, for pulling, you're going to have your blinding spirals from far out. Blinding spirals is a great tool to use for pulling. You also have, of course, your Helady throw. Guys, do you remember that when your first set of Helady throw hits, it does enact a CC? And so for pulling, you always want to miss the first hit of a Lady Assault so that that way you can pull mobs and that they don't get CC. They just instantly wake up. So when you pull mobs, you'll miss. Let's see, I want to pull that cow to me. I'll hit the cow and I'll hit the other cow and then they'll just come straight to me. If the packs are really far away, you can just do your Rabam just like that. Alternatively, you can also do your... So let's say we have... Now let's say there's a pack here to my left and a pack here to my right. If you want to pull both mobs to the center of the two, you would do your rebomb. So shift X, rotate the camera, and then you'll be able to pull both mobs will come stand in between you. And also guys, don't forget that you can also do all's breath. All's breath does count as a summon and it'll also count as for three extra mobs. Just as a recap, you got this, Lady Assault, and then you have your above. Those are going to be the only three skills you use for pulling. I do not recommend using quicksand for pulling on uh, succession of Shashin because of the ease of use of the other pulls and them being more accessible. Alright guys, so for your PV high-end combo rotation, it's quite simple. So, once you guys do the pull, the way you're going to DPS down the pack, always have your all's breath up whenever you guys can. But the combo is going to be quite simple. You're going to Shadow Flitter to get your add-ons propped. You'll do your Haledi Assault to get the plus 20 AP buff. And then you'll do Dominion. And then you're going to do a Dune Slash. Okay, so again, we're going to do All's Breath, Slicer, Shadow Flitter, Haledi Assault, right? And then into Dominion, into Dune Slash. When that's done, then you're going to go into Descent, okay? And by now, your opponents are debuffed by the Evasion and by 40 DP. And you're going to have some, all your monster damage proc, okay? When that is done, then you can follow up into your main damaging combo. So the way that looks is you're going to do uh, iframe, Purge, Dominion, Ridge Reaver, Shift Q. And if they're not dead, you can do your Rebombs. Or you can follow up with your shifty. So I'm going to show you guys what a full possible PV rotation will look like. And then you would rinse and repeat the whole process. If you guys are fighting tanky mobs right before that whole process, what you can also do is do this into rupture, and then you guys can just iframe and then do your. Um, Hell 80 throw and then do the same combo. All right guys for your PvP engage tools You don't have a single protected skill to really get a uh, protected CC off Unfortunately as succession of Shashin. It's not a very safe kit um, You have your block jump 
and then you gotta make sure you cancel that after you do the block jump so you guys, you guys can be a little bit safer. Other than that, you can also throw out your blinding spirals. Um, from distance, you can try to throw out your purge as well and then press Q. You can also do a cancel with piercing tornado, which is something that awakening can't do. You'll shift F like this, and then when you land, you'll do piercing tornado and then you're gonna iframe. That is another good way to catch people off guard. And then another good way to do it for large scale is I like to do this. And then when I'm behind people, I'll do slicer into ridge, descent, purge. You guys get the idea, right? So that's uh, those are pretty much going to be all your PvP engaging tools. You don't really have that many. All right, guys. So accessories off again. Now, unlike the Awakening Ashashin, uh, succession combos are very linear and there isn't a lot of diversity. So I'm only going to be showing you guys a few examples of combos that are practical of doing. Your main combo is going to be block jump, okay? You're going to S L M B, right? You're going to do your Haleri throw into alls. You're going to press C, which goes into which goes into Dune Slash. And then when that's done, you're just going to iframe and do uh, descent. That's going to be one of your hardest hitting combos. So full speed, it's just going to be. That's going to be one of your main combos. All right, guys, so for succession, this is going to be one of your hardest hitting 1v1 combos. You're going to do air assault, slicer, shadow splitter, alls, and then you're going to press C to do dune slash, and then you're going to do alls again. Okay, now once you do the double alls, you'll do ridge reaver into shift Q, and that'll be how you end your combo. The full combo for damage is going to look like this. That's going to be one of your hardest hitting 1v1 combos. Alright guys, so for this combo, you're going to be doing your block jump into the uh, into your iframe. You're going to do a cancel from Owl's Breath into Shift Q. Then you're going to iframe, Descent, Slicer, Ridge Reaver into Dune Slash. So, it's going to look like this. And then you can super armor trade if you guys need. If you guys need a quick combo to kill Gearlets, you'll just do your backflip, slicer, and then you're gonna do alls, dune slash, and then you'll just uh, Ridge Reaver Shift Q. So, very simple. Alright guys, and that'll be it for the Hashashin Guide. If you guys did enjoy the video, you guys can hit the sub button. We do play Hashashin and Musa, just for you guys as reference. Um, I don't normally make guides, we normally do actual content, so I typically stay away from guides. But if you guys enjoyed, hit that sub button, hit the like button, comment down below. I'll see y'all next time. Peace.